first thing I might want to do is to normalize the sound level because you can see there's an awful lot of empty white space and it's not terribly loud. So I can select everything with command A or and now nothing's lit up here. I found that it's sometimes a little sluggish, but if I just click on the desktop and then Apple H for hide the desktop, then it's fully active. And then I can just click on this one, make volume increase. If it's a longer piece, this is just one minute. If it's a longer piece, it takes a little while to do all the calculations for each click. But if you just let it do that before you click again, then you're still in control. You see this one is getting near the distortion point. Seems to be fine. What we could do then is to select the rest of it, which isn't so loud. And we have three ways of doing a selection. If we deselect first with Command D, then I just click and drag like in any word processor, and then apply the increase volume there. I can mess around in lots of different places, but it'll probably be a bit untidy if I do it more times. <laughs> Well, it's a bit hissy, of course. The birds were recorded outside the house quite some years ago, using a very old Mac. And then I've added the harp afterwards, so there's plenty of places the hiss can have come in. If the selection is the right length, but not in the right place, I can simply drag it like that, which is rather neat. That would be useful, for example, when you need music for a video clip or for a DVD menu. The second way of making that selection is simply to press on the in and out buttons here while it's playing. I've got a third way of making a selection in the play menu with command and left and right arrows. I don't just now understand why that possibility is greyed out. Let's say I want the extract to start from here. So I just select what is before and click. Remove selected. <laughs> There it's going to start normally, so I do a fade in. I can't determine the speed of the fade in, whether it's fast or slow. It seems to be continuous speed. But what I can do is to reapply the fade in several times, and you can see then it becomes steeper curve. I can't go in the opposite direction. That's rather lovely. And if I find it takes too long to get going, then deselect, select again, and cut. A very nice detail in this program, which I haven't seen in other sound programs, although you've got it in Photoshop and perhaps some others too, is the crop tool. You make a selection and then delete the rest of it, what's around it, so you keep the thing that is selected. So, for example, I say, this is the part I want, and then crop, remove, non-selected. Very nice. And then with a fade in, and a fade out, we can have a long fade out. Mm. 
now perhaps ready to save. As far as I can see, it doesn't make any difference whether you choose save or save as. You get the same dialog box for both. And they're both really export commands. Of course, every program that lets you think it's saving a document isn't really changing the original document. It's creating a new version from your changes. And having saved the new version, it deletes the old one. But most programs do it under the bonnet so you don't see what's happening. Here, it's a bit more honest. We have to give it a new name. One little problem with this program is that it doesn't tell you in the window which file it is you've been working on. It just says Maxim Audio Editor. In every other program I know, it gives you the name of the file you're working on. But I remember this was Birds and Harp. Or we could call it Harp and Birds. And perhaps it's the second version, so I just call it two. And then I have a choice of three formats. Two compressed, MP3 or AAC, and the WAV is actually a Windows format. I'm a bit surprised they used it on the Mac. Perhaps it's for compatibility. But that's a, a format which is not compressed. But let's see how it works as an MP3. 128 is about the lowest quality that's nice to listen to with music. Variable bit rate takes a bit longer to do, but gives you a better quality. The sample rate, we can leave it on auto. And of course I want it stereo. It's on the desktop. Command D takes me to the desktop. And save. And then the last function is this little inspect, which is really rather neat. It's about the same as you have in iTunes. You can you can write in the different categories. An artist, David and the Bird. Album, not yet. Composer, guess who? Year, well, 1998. I think 2010. And there we get the summary. And look, I can actually drag a picture which will be associated and perhaps embedded into the audio file. This is the harp, and these are the birds. In iTunes, you can have more than one picture, but it looks like you can only have one here. If we hide the audio editor a moment and open a new finder window and go to the desktop. And look in image view we see that none of the audio files have got their own images so let's save this once again Save it as AAC this time. Heart and bird two. Hide the editor. There we see harp and birds with Rick's birds as the icon. <laughs> So there we are. It has some limitations and some things don't always seem to work quite the way they should, but it's free and feels very nice to you. www.macsum.com